Hi, good afternoon. Actually, good morning. Welcome here in studio. We we're talking sports with Val. We've got a, you've got a crazy busy day ahead of you. So we're actually filming a little earlier than we normally do. So you can head uh, down to a little golf match that's going on this weekend down in Indianapolis. A pretty big golf match, yeah. actually. Yeah, this is going to be really exciting. And so you're, you're just so excited for Mia McCagg, the first ever girls golfer from Pioneer to make the state finals, and then of course the whole Rochester team. First time the team has been there in 11 years. And as you saw in the article I wrote, and I, yep, I saved that picture in my phone. I've been waiting to use it for 11 years, and I finally <laughs> was able to drag it out. Yeah, a picture of Ava Thomas as a seven-year-old. Yeah, with the two, with the 2013 team, and now she's back with the team yeah. as a member of the team going to state. Yeah, that's awesome. If you didn't see that, that's obviously uh, that was posted this morning on the, the blog there on rtc4sports.com or on rtc4.com. You can look at yeah. Val's blog. A great article there talking about uh, the Rochester team. There's an article in there as well. Right, and Ava's own recollections of that team and. That was the her little brother was born as well, so she just remembered that being a cra she just remembers that being a crazy time. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty neat to see that picture and brings back some memories. And then you know, see Ava just a little bit shorter than she is now. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, you're gonna be headed down there, and then after that, you're gonna be uh, traveling back north to Wabash County to uh, call the game with uh, Rochester headed over to Northfield to take on the Norsemen. And, That'll be on radio only tonight. We're uh, we're not going to be able to do the TV. The last time we were there, we were up on the top of the press box doing the production, and it got a little iffy by the end of the game with the dew and the moisture and the cold and everything else going on. And it's just a small press box, and you know we. I told uh, Chris, the uh, you know Oswald, the uh, athletic director over there, is like I understand it's a small press box and. So we're going to take the night off from broadcasting over there. We'll be back next week as the uh, Zebras will be hosting Southwood. Uh, be next to last game, the last home game of the year for the uh, Zebras. Hard to believe that we're there already. So we got some uh, some draws to talk about, Val. The uh, yeah. sectional draw for uh, yeah, boys one, and girls. One of the girls' uh, golf note I want, or two other girls' golf notes I wanted to mention. Congratulations to Savannah Miller of Valley on a great freshman season. Yeah, shot an 81 at the regional at uh, at uh, Noble Hawk in Kendallville last Friday. Missed going to state by only four strokes. I think she finished 10th overall out of a yeah. field of 90. Nice. As a freshman, as a I mean, freshman. she is yeah. has such a promising future. Mm -hmm. uh, it's really going to be exciting to see what, how that Valley Girls Golf Program uh, continues to improve with Savannah on the team. And I also wanted to give a shout-out to Sophia Kay of Logansport. Mm -hmm. She will be participating in the state finals. Uh, she finished third among individuals. Mia McKegg was second, and then Sophia Kay was third and actually won a playoff yeah. over a girl from Hanover Central to make state. And why are we talking about Sophia Kay from Logansport? Because her grandfather is Mike Kay, who is a former boys basketball assistant coach at Rochester. Okay. Mike, as many of you know, is a from Peru originally, and he um, worked very closely with the late Jim Metcalf. And so when Jim became the head coach at Rochester, the first coach he wanted to bring along was Mike Kay. Okay. And Mike is, uh, I mean, and, and uh, I got to meet talk to Mike back at the sectional over at uh, when we were in Monticello over at Tipping New Country Club, and. He told some great Jim, story, Jim Metcalf stories. He said Jim told him when he was nine years old, he goes, Coach, I want to be a head coach someday too, and I want you to be there with me. Mm. When he was nine years old, he said this. <laughs> wow. And in, 20, in 2011, he gets the Rochester job when he's um, 32 years old, uh -huh. and the first guy he hires is he keeps his promise and hires Mike Kay <laughs> to be his assistant coach. And Mike, besides being a very uh, – Good basketball coach. He was also a very, very avid golfer who spent many a round over at um, Round Barn Golf Club here in Mill Creek at, in, Ro in Rochester. Yeah. And took his granddaughter with him and taught his granddaughter how to play. So yeah. really happy for Mike. So he, a little little tie back into the uh, Rochester area there yeah, for her. Yeah, yeah. And Mike told some great stories about that 2012 Rochester team that really, you know, they, I mean, they basically played six players the entire season and how they kept coming and coming. And, they, you know, they beat a good Winamac team on Winamac's floor in the sectional to get to the sectional final before eventually falling to Hebron. And, of course, some, some great stories about Coach Metcalf and just, the, the you know, the, trage the tragedy of his passing. But told some great stories, and he's a great guy. And I just wanted to give him a sh give him and the, the, the K family a shout-out. Yeah, yeah. 
Some good stuff. Good luck, obviously, yeah. to all the girls golfers. Uh, follow Val. You know, you can see his Twitter feed or X feed, sorry, down yeah. here. And uh, he'll be giving updates from the uh, course there this afternoon and, and tomorrow. Yeah. So keep an eye on uh, how things are going. I think they're going to have a, a little bit of a, a feed tomorrow for IHSA TV. Yeah, they're going to have a camera on the 18th hole. Yeah. That's, I think yeah. I think that's something new. That's going to be great. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So they can... You can actually tune in IHSATV.org, and uh, you can tune into that. I don't know that it'll be pay-per-view. It should be free, I would think. So. I would think, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so good stuff there. Uh, soccer draw. Yeah, soccer um, draw. We had the girls yeah. and boys soccer draws on Sunday. And, uh, we, again, there are two sectionals that cover our area in Class 1A, Sectional 36. That's the one at Argus. And uh, we had uh, Manchester drawing Culver in one first-round game. And the winner of that game will play the winner of the Oregon Davis Rochester game. Yeah. So and then uh, that's, that's on the girls side. On the girls side. Yeah. Again, that's, and we will we will be in Argus Tuesday for those two games. For both of those games, yeah. yeah and I, boy, I think the draw came out in terms of if you want to just give us some competitive games. Mm-hmm. Boy, they gave us three competitive games. Yeah. In that section, I'm really excited to see that. You know, Manchester has been playing really well of late. Yeah. And to you know uh, to play. This Culver team, this high-scoring Culver team that beat North White eight to nothing last night. Mm-hmm. Ava McKeon's up to forty-three goals on the season. She had four more last night. <laughs> so, how, you know, how will Manchester defend McKeon, and how will Culver try to stop this a Manchester team that has a lot of different weapons? Yeah, I'm really excited. I have not got a chance to watch Culver live mm-hmm. this year. We were going to go up there for the uh, Rochester uh, game, but that got postponed, and we didn't make yeah. it to the rematch. But uh, I'm really excited to see this team. And right. We've been talking about Ava a lot, and I want to see her play. Right, and this Alexis Gasinovic, she's just a freshman. And Eliana Andrzejewski, I believe she's just a sophomore. She had two goals last night. So this is mm-hmm. a, it's, you know, Ava kind of is the marquee uh, player, so to speak, but she's not their only uh, star player for Coach Nice. Yeah, yeah. And then Oregon Davis and Rochester. Oregon Davis is winless on the season. They haven't scored a goal yeah. yet this season. So a great chance for the Lady Z's to advance. Yep. Of course, Rochester with a win last night over Tippecanoe Valley, won four to nothing, for win number two on the season for the Good. Ladies' East. And then uh, the bye game is going to be Argus and Lavelle. Yeah. And Argus, you know, beat Lavelle earlier this year. Again, the Lady Dragons are at home and they got a bye, so you certainly have to like their chances yeah. uh, to win a sectional championship here. But I mean, they're going to have to earn it because Lavelle is always a solid program. Yeah, no Bremen, no Trinity Greenlawn in this sectional this right. year, so the uh, Lady Dragons are probably licking their chops and. Yeah. Nothing better than getting that first round by, but uh, you know that that Argus Laville rivalry. I mean, you just never know. Right. You just never know with that. That's just uh, that's been a, a heated rivalry for many many years. Right. And uh, Coach Dunlap is the assistant coach at Laville, and of course she's a great former Argus player. So yeah, yeah. yeah. And it was Coach Schaefer. I don't know if Coach Schaefer was still working there, but again, he's a, he's an Argus grad. I don't know if he's still mm-hmm. on the Laville staff, but yeah. 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 Those two, t- those two teams know each other very, very well. Yeah, so that'll cover most of our schools. You got uh, uh, Tippecanoe Valley in right. the two A, right? And they drew right there in Class Two A, Sectional Twenty One. They drew Plymouth in the first round. I don't believe Valley has ever played Plymouth in girls soccer, mm. so that will be a first. Uh, there's only one ranked. There is a ranked team in that field. That's Northwood, and they are ranked number sixteen this week. And Northwood drew Culver Academy right off the bat. That mm-hmm. should be a really good game. Yeah, whoever can win that game will probably have a leg up over the field. Yeah, yeah. Uh, on the boys' side, we've got a couple sectionals we're going to be keeping an eye on. Of course, yeah. uh, the Argus sectional, but we also we're going to be uh, head down to McConaughey mm-hmm. on Monday for the Rochester Zebras boys' team. They're going to be playing uh, Peru. And Peru has really been coming on. Peru beat Rochester in PKs when they played during the regular season. And Peru just beat McConaughey the other night, one to nothing. Oh, that wow. was a real eye opener. Uh, I'm not sure that I would call that an upset. I, you know, mm-hmm. McConaughey. That I, you know, we saw McConaughey earlier this year. To keep to keep your sheet clean against McConaughey, yeah, you're playing some defense, and you're, again, uh, that's a very tough-minded Peru team that plays just solid, you know, st- stick inside your jersey defense. So, you know, how will the Zebras be able to try and you know create some offensive opportunities against Peru? That will be interesting to see. And of course, the winner of that Peru Rochester game will play Wabash in the semifinals. Wabash has won only two games all year, but they got a bye, and both uh, you know, uh, both Wabash has lost both Rochester and Peru during the regular season. So, whoever win that Peru Rochester game is going to be thinking they got a great chance to make it to the yeah. final. Yeah. Uh, meanwhile, in the other half of the draw, uh, we have uh, McConaughey playing Eastern, 
in one quarterfinal and Tippecanoe Valley playing Northwestern in the other quarterfinal. Those will be on Tuesday. Yeah. So the uh, the only game on Monday will be that rochester Prue game. We will be down there for that. Yeah. We will be back um, for the uh, semifinal game if Rochester advances. Mm-hmm. We'll, we'll follow the Zebras as long as they're uh, alive down there. So Yeah. And again, the, the Valley-Northwestern game, uh, again, it's a Valley team that's, they don't have a ton of offensive weapons, but they got a really good goalkeeper in Julian Rosas and a really... They really play organized defense at Valley. They're another team that the, you're not going to get. You're not. They're not going to give you a ton of opportunities. So it'll be interesting to see how that Northwestern team can create some offensive opportunities. Uh, Northwestern lost to Manchester the other night, two to one. So it'll be the Tigers and the Squires sharing the TRC, uh, I believe. Um, so. Yeah. And then up at Argus in the one A sectional, you know we've got Caston, Winnemac, and Culver, but uh, it's looking like it's going to be the Argus Dragons uh, sectional to lose, basically. They got a right. first-round bye. They take on a Culver team that has winless mm-hmm. to, to get to the championship. Yeah. Uh, correction, Culver got the first win the other day. They beat Oregon Davis. Oh, they did? Okay. They beat them okay. in PKs, 4-3. So they've got, four a, to three. Yeah. they've got a one-win team to, yeah. uh, to face to get to the sectional championship. Yeah, yeah, Coach Bushman from Culver emailed me, so congratulations to the Cavaliers. Yeah, but, yeah. yeah, they're going to be underdogs playing the yeah. Dragons at Eugene Snyder Field in, in the sectional. Yeah. And then uh, Caston and Winnemac in that uh, first round game. Winnemac drew North Miami mm-hmm. in what in a first round game. Lakeland Christian drew Caston in a first mm-hmm. round game. So the winner of the Winnemac North Miami game played the winner of the Lakeland Christian Caston game. Yeah. Caston coming on, they got a win over Winnemac last night, four to three. Um, Caston is four seven and one. They started zero and seven, and they've gone yeah. four zero and one since. Yeah. They yeah. had a tie against Laville earlier in the week. Yeah, that's a big one too. Yeah. So. Uh, those two will be playing then on Monday, so we'll be, uh, like we said, we're going to be at McConaughey, depending on how Rochester does uh, as to what we do on Wednesday. So yeah. we'll uh, keep an eye on what's going on there and uh, who's winning and where they're going. It's kind of a, a fluid situation based yeah. on who wins, mm-hmm. especially when you're trying to cover a couple of different sectionals. Yeah. Um, Volley or uh, boys tennis. You were down at Peru last night before you came back up here for uh, volleyball, right? And Rochester got a three to two win over Wabash to advance to the sectional final. Uh, Wabash had beaten Maconaqua five to nothing on uh, Wednesday to get to the Rochester match on Thursday. The Zebras got a bye, so again, uh, and as it turned out, it was basically a carbon copy of what happened during the regular season. Rochester had beaten Wabash three to two during the regular season. They beat him again 3-2 in the sectional, and in both matches they won at one singles, one doubles, and two doubles. Those yeah. were the three points. Um, it, yeah, uh, the, 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 the decisive point turned out to be at one doubles, where uh, Harrison Dunwoody and Brady Morgan were able to win. They won 6-2, 7-5 to get that third point. It turned out every, all eyes were on them at the end, and mm-hmm. Harrison and Brady turn, uh, pulled it out. So... Yeah, so it'll be Rochester against Peru in the sectional final tonight. The Zebras lost to Peru 4-1 to one during the regular season. Uh, we'll see if they can pull the upset tonight, but that is a Peru team that has going that is going for a 7 Pete. Mm-hmm. They have won the sectional every year since 2018. Yeah. And they looked dominant in beating a, beating a pretty good Manchester team 5 to nothing yeah. on Wednesday. Yeah. So the opportunity, even if the Zebras team loses, if uh, Tanner can win and the number one doubles can win, right. they can continue on. In the individual tournaments, right, the right. singles tournament and the doubles tournament. Right, but they, they would both have to win, or I mean not necessarily both have to win, but whoever would win. Whoever would win. If the team loses. Uh, even if the team loses. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Tanner, 14-0 and on the year. He won 6-1, uh, 6-2 over Eli Matter and a Wabash, a pretty good player. Mm-hmm. But, boy, the thing about Tanner is that the, he's just got a great um, variety to his game. Mm-hmm. Uh, even if things aren't clicking, he can make the adjustment. It's just part of part of being a senior, part of playing a lot of tennis. That it, he's, I mean, he's got that great kick serve on the second serve. He he can serve short. He can serve – he can he can kick it wide. Uh, he you know, he's a really good volleyer. You know, so often in tennis, I mean, you know, you see Wimbledon, the U.S. Open, you see those great pros, and they can put away an overhead easily. It doesn't happen often in high school tennis, but mm-hmm. with Tanner Reinerts, if he gets an overhead, he's going he's gonna to put it away. Yeah. I know I was talking to Joe, and, and you know, obviously he's got a lot of tennis experience himself mm-hmm. and, and then his kids as well, but he was saying how uh, he just noticed that Tanner doesn't make mistakes. Yeah. He plays very smart, and he... Mm-hmm. 
he does the right things at the right time. So yeah, obviously that's probably a part of the reason why he's fourteen and zero. Right, <laughs> right, and you think right, and I mean Tanner's got great power, but he's also a really good like defensive player. Like mm-hmm. he can retrieve balls that other yeah. kids can't because he's just such a great athlete as well. Yeah. Uh, volleyball sectional draw coming up. Hard to believe we're already winding that down as well. Oh, yeah, we, be, uh, we got that. I got yeah. an article to write about that this yeah, weekend too. Yeah. yeah. Uh, again, check check the Twitter slash X account. Check the uh, Instagram account. We'll have brackets as soon as they come out. So yeah. again, v- we're really interested to see what that Class One A sectional looks like coming out of uh, South Newton. Mm-hmm. You know who. When when might Pioneer draw Tri County? Because mm-hmm. we're thinking those two are going to be yeah yeah they're, they're going to be the butt heads at some point, and that's yeah. going to decide things. The winner probably goes through one of those two teams, right? And then obviously Southwood Southwood. I mean, again, we talked about the two way <laughs> sectional last night. That is such a good tough two way sectional. Even yeah, without yeah. Southwood, it would be a tough sectional. Yeah, and look what they did to Manchester last night. Yeah, I mean Manchester is a great team, and they just throttled them. I yeah, mean, just, Manchester got 16, no more than 16 in any set, yeah. Yeah, so, I mean, just unbelievable, you know, how good that sectional is without Southwood, and then you throw them in there, of yeah. course, the defending 1A state champion, who mm-hmm. very well could be the 2A state champion this year. Yeah. Just that good. And I'm really curious to see that 1A sectional at Culver is going to be interesting, too. I remember mm-hmm. Culver hosts a sectional and a regional. Yeah. Again, the Lady Cavs playing very Culver, We'll talk about them. Yeah. We'll talk about Ooh. them. But Triton and South Central are in that as well. Triton coming off a big win against Pioneer. Pioneer. Yeah. yeah. And wow. Triton's got a win over South Central earlier this year as well. Yeah, we know what South Central can do. They won 18. They've got 18 wins on the year. Yeah. So you know that they will not go down easily. Right. Um, so it's how that draw plays out is going to be interesting. That's a seven team sectional for volleyball. Yeah. Wow. So just one bye. Just one bye. Yeah. Right. And then the 3A sectional is coming up. Uh, uh, at West Noble, but again, yeah. you know that Northwood team is going to be loaded for bear. Mm-hmm. How will how will this Valley team that has kind of run through this uh, the INSC schedule so far? Uh, where might they match up? And of course, what, uh, the host team, West Noble, the Lady Chargers, they're a very good team as well. Yeah. I also wanted to give a shout out to the. Well, l- let me ask you this trivia question: Who was the Missouri Valley Conference Freshman Swimmer of the Week this past week? Well, if I could read your writing, I could probably tell you that. Carson Parker. Okay. Carson Parker from Valley. Okay. Yeah. His first week in the conference. Is that what that says? (laughs) Carson Parker, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, congratulations to him. Yeah. 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 Awesome. Well, we're running late here already, so we need to take a break and come back and talk some more sports here with Val. Kriskin's Pools and Spas is your local contractor for all your pool and hot tub installation needs. With a wide selection to choose from, Kriskin's is sure to hook you up with exactly what you need, no matter what your budget is. To learn more about our services, find us on Facebook at Kriskin's Pools and Spas, call 574-857-3100, or stop on by at 7448 Liberty Avenue in Fulton to see how Kriskin's can help you. There are some things in life you just can't plan for. But here at Evans Agency, we strive to help you have all your bases covered when it comes to protecting your assets from whatever life throws your way. Whether it's home, business, auto, or life, Evans Agency has got you covered. With a heart and hand for friendship, Evans Agency has been serving the community for over 20 years. Call 574-224-6988 or visit online at www.evansagencyllc.com. Quick, quick, it's pizza, quick. Hey, everybody. It's time to solve a pizza problem. Mom's at work, and all there is is leftovers. Quick, scan this QR code to order some delicious pizza, quick pizza. Nice work. Another pizza problem solved with delicious pizza, quick pizza. See you next time. Quick, quick, it's pizza, quick. Find us on Facebook. 4C Health is a community mental health center that serves 14 counties in North Central Indiana, including Fulton County. We offer an expansive list of behavioral health and crisis care services to best fit your needs. We strive to give you the best care that is compassionate, collaborative, and competent. Whatever you are going through, you're not alone, and we are here to help. Check out our website at 4chealthin.org to learn more or call us at 1-800-552-3106. 
Since our doors opened in 1925, the Smith Sawyer Smith Agency has been family owned and client centered. Whatever your insurance needs are, we strive to bring you the best solutions to protect the things that matter most to you. To get a full list of our services, call us at 574 223 2166. Visit us online at smithsawyerins.com or stop on in at one of our locations to see how the Smith Sawyer Smith Agency can best serve you. Welcome back here talking sports with Val for a Friday week seven. Week seven of the football season. Hard to believe. We've only got two more weeks after this of the regular season left. And uh, let's do a little uh, Rochester Zebras as they were hosting the Peru Tigers. Of course, Peru handed Rochester their only conference loss of the year last year. A little different looking Peru team, though, coming to uh, Barnhart Field there on Friday. Right. We knew Isaiah Corba was not going to be playing. As it turned out, Tanner Boggs also did not play. So they were down their top two running backs. So certainly the Zebras were in pretty good uh, position going into this one. We the the box thing I, I that that caught us by a surprise, um, but uh, the zebras as they have as has been their habit the last couple of years, scoring on their first t- uh, possession and this was just a fantastic catch by Drew Bowers for a touchdown on a twenty nine yarder that was just sensational. I, the cover the coverage was not bad at all, but he was able to adjust to the ball and make a great catch. I I still can't get over the fact that he has not played football since fourth grade. I mean he yeah. is doing. So good. Yeah. Again, if you're uh, unfamiliar with Peru, you might you might be familiar with the name Trevi Hillman Conley, but you didn't know we didn't know he had played <laughs> tight end until this year. But boy, he's he's just a romping, stomping, hard to handle kid. Yeah. At tight end, but this was the big play in the game. The quarterback Antunez turns around and he inadvertently, if you watch, he collides with uh, Tr- Trevi Hillman Conley. And he winds up fumbling, and Brant Beck recovers. And, and then this would happen, a 56-yard run by Brant Beck on that belly sweep play as Rochester gets the ball down to the 11-yard line. So, again, Peru's down 6 nothing. They're driving. That's the 15th play of the drive in which they fumble, and all of a sudden the Zebras have it, and now they're headed back in the other direction. Yeah, that was Peru's initial drive of the game went clear into the second clear, quarter. Clear into <laughs> the second quarter, yeah. yeah. Uh, that was a touchdown run by Kale Schatz and then the two-point conversion run by Beck. And all of a sudden, Rochester's up 14 to nothing. And then another fumble. And, I, you know, we said at the time, we thought, I think we said Parks recovered the fumble on the air as the game was going on, but that was Mason Heisey who recovered the fumble. And then this play, a beautifully done trap. Kale Schatz untouched. Boy, Kale Schatz is just running the ball great. I mean, with him and Beck back there, it's just a great one-two combination. Yeah. And again, when the belly... When the belly sweep is working, that leads to the trap and the mm-hmm. belly working because you're so worried about the. And then you throw Meadows in there yeah. as well. I mean, boy, it's just a. You know, we were kind of wondering what would the what would the backfield look like without Alex Deming and Ferv, and it's looking pretty good. Right, they run the counter to Trent Meadows for a touchdown, and they get another two point conversion. It's thirty to nothing. And then a short punt. I, I think Kyra Doran was trying to catch <laughs> that punt. <laughs> <laughs> it was 30 to nothing at this point and again the zebras got great field position and again again they're so worried about the belly sweep that Rochester's able to run the sweep in the other direction and Meadows gets another touchdown they have attack on another two point conversion Rochester scored 32 points in less than 8 minutes yeah. and it went from 6 nothing to 38 nothing yeah that that point where they had that fumble you know on that 15th play of the drive that had lasted you know dang near a quarter it's and a classic. From there on, it was just all I, Rochester. It's a cliche. I know it's a classic cliche, but it took the wind out of Peru's sails completely. Oh, yeah. I mean, they were right in the game. They were physical. They were they were moving the ball. They were moving the chains. They were, you know, getting those four and five. That was ex- it. Was exactly how they needed to play. And then all of a sudden, yeah, it just stopped for them. The, the Bradley Edwards kid, their fullback, is a really nice player, mm-hmm. along with Trevi Hillman Conley. But again, and they even completed a couple <laughs> passes, which we weren't expecting. But again, once the Zebras got the the turnover, it just the the, conf, the 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 air let, went out of the balloon for Peru and Rochester just gained a lot of confidence. 
the the zebras on the road at Northfield. You know, Northfield is uh, struggling a little bit this year. How do you keep from a uh, letdown after that big win against Peru, who had beat you the last year? Yeah. Because you're you're trying to set up for that Week Nine matchup with McConaughey, who also thumped uh, conference unbeaten Northwestern last week. Right. And rem- remember, Rochester beat Northfield sixty-two to nothing last year. I'm sure Northfield remembers that game. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And they're going to want to get uh, their pound of flesh back in this game. Rochester's had trouble winning at Northfield in previous years. Yes, they won there two years ago, but Rochester had lost there the previous three times they had played there. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, again, Northfield is tough to beat on their home field. Northfield beat Wabash last week 49-12, to a season high in points. A se- they had well over 350 yards rushing in that game. Yeah. It, but, but what was interesting, it was only 14-12 to about halfway through the third quarter, and then Northfield scored 35 unanswered points to close out the game, and it wound oh. up with a running clock. Yeah. So... Uh, again, I don't know if they could beat Rochester that way, where they again, where maybe you're wondering, did Roch- did Wabash just get tired in the second half in that right. game? They're not gonna Northfield's not gonna be able to outlast the Zebras, right? You would think, right? Northfield's got a fullback in Jarrett Holmes. Um, he had 162 yards rushing last week. He only had 154 yards rushing combined the first five weeks of the year. Yeah. So, but he, I mean, he's a good player. We've seen him in the past, and again, Northfield runs their runs that midline option. So you've got to respect. Holmes. When you play assignment football on defense, you've got to have one or two guys focused on Holmes and not letting him get free. Yeah. Well, it's uh, it's one of those games. I don't want to call it a trap game, but you just got to make sure that you take care of business. I yeah. think you get that win, and then you got to right. you know, and then you got a home game with Southwood, who's uh, currently setting winless. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I mean that 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 McConaughey game is looming large for conference. Right. Right. So. And one other, one other thing to notice, Rochester as a team has averaged seven yards per carry for the season. Mm-hmm. Northfield allowed seven and a half yards a carry to Wabash last week, and that's a Wabash team known for, no more for its passing than right. for rushing. Right. So, again, it's hard to imagine Rochester not being able to run the ball in this game, but can they protect the ball, avoid turnovers, avoid penalties, and can they get some stops? Yeah. All right. Well, you'll have that game. Uh, again, that will not be on Channel 4, so you'll have to tune in to WROI, listen to Val and Randy from Northfield tonight. Uh, pre-game about 640, I think, usually yep. is when Randy starts that. So, 92.1 on your FM dial. Yeah, I think they have an app as well that you mm-hmm. can pick that up mm-hmm. as well. So uh, good luck to the Zebras. Uh, volleyball, we didn't have time to get the highlight package put together for the uh, Zebras' uh, senior night last night. The, mm-hmm. the five seniors for Rochester coming out and getting a big win against Winnemac as they head into the final week of the season. Yeah, we should mention the week started by going 1-3 and three at the Warsaw Invite, finished in 10th place out of 12, but the one win was against Tippecanoe Valley. In that match against Valley, they lost the first set and de- were down 21-8 in the second set, but came all the <laughs> way back to win that set. 27-25, and then 15-11 in the third set. Uh, their, you know, and their other three losses were to Fairfield, Leo, and West Noble. Three really good teams. Mm-hmm. So uh, again, I think there was, you know, talking with Linnea Strasser, I said, "Did you get better from that tournament?" She said, "Oh yeah, they did." And then they came back against Wabash on Tuesday night yeah. and lost, you know, in, in four tough sets. Oh, yeah, I had some huge opportunities. They had uh, set points, I think, in, in three of the four sets, didn't they, where they had yeah. the opportunity, and I think right. set one went, uh, was it 27-25? 27-29. 27-29, yeah. I mean, and they had three set points in that set. Yeah. And the fourth set was also 27-29, and they had three set points in that set. Yeah, yeah. To, so, to have a chance to get it to a fifth. Yeah. I think there was a, a, a bounce back and forth there where they had a set point. Wabash would have a match point. They would have a set yeah. point. I mean, it, it was just a crazy match, and you got to give uh, the Zebras a lot of credit for hanging in there with a, a really good Wabash team. Yeah, Aubrey Bollinger had 19 kills. Um, Aubrey Wilson had 18 digs and 35 assists. Mm-hmm. And then uh, the senior night win versus Winnemac. You're know. right, where they were able to win uh, – 25-7, 25-11, 23-25, 25-8. Uh, Coach Strasser did some experimenting with the lineup in the third set. It didn't work out, so she put the seniors back in in the fourth yeah. set, and they were able to close it out. But, again, it was so great to see Lily Led on the floor last mm-hmm. night. I, I didn't realize – I talked with Lily after the match, and she explained her injury. I didn't realize how bad it was. It was a broken leg. Oh, a broken, really? Broken. Uh, broken fibula. 
Yeah, so I, did, I thought it was just a, it was more than just a sprain. Yeah. So yeah. she had just gotten the uh, go-ahead from the doctor. To the, they cleared her to play about a week ago and uh, was able to get back in the lineup just in time for senior night and was really able to be impactful. Yeah, it didn't look like she'd missed a beat. I yeah. mean, she came out there and played very well, and, and they definitely needed her, and they're going to need her down the stretch run too. And they've got uh, a couple of road games uh, next week. They go to Valley on Monday and then uh, finish off the conference season at Whitco on Thursday mm-hmm. and then finish off with a, uh invite over at Twin Lakes then next Saturday. Right, that Twin Lakes invite, kind of the traditional season closer. Yeah, as they get ready for sectional. But yeah, again, a really great night, and you know the, the introduction of the ball girls, I think, was a really neat thing. And again, Audrey Bollinger uh, was honored for her 500th kill, and uh, both um, Riley Clevenger and Mia Hadishel for their 500th dig. Mm-hmm. So yeah. that was a, that was a nice moment as well. And and uh, Lily, I think, got honored for her 500th kill as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah so that was that was a nice uh, nice moment as well. I, I think there's definitely a feeling that you know with the way the numbers are that the program is in pretty good shape obviously these seniors will be missed mm-hmm. especially i mean they're just we we really like them as kids but yeah yeah and it's you know for me especially because they're the same age as mckenna and then she's played ball with a lot of them yeah. you know over the years as well and against them and so yeah this one hits pretty hard for me <laughs> so yeah. yeah it's it's a great group of kids you know and audrey just she just shines she always has a smile on her face you know and you, she can just light up a room and yeah you know uh Mia's a little quieter, but you know, Dara, you know, just just a great group of kids. Yeah, yeah. So and and you know, it was interesting. The boys' tennis team, I mean, they were anxious to get back for senior night yeah. to, to root on the volleyball kids as yeah, well. Yeah, that's that's neat. So. Yeah. All right, we're gonna take another quick break here. Come back and talk some more sports with Val in just a moment. Are you in need of branded apparel, promotional products, custom signs, graphic design for your business, church, or organization? The Winning Edge can provide a dedicated service rep to ensure you have custom products when you need them. Need a way to provide custom items to your employees or customers? The Winning Edge can set up a customized edge store that features branded products tailored to your business, school, church, or charitable cause with no additional charge. With a wide variety of customizable apparel, promotional items, office accessories, and custom tumblers, the Winning Edge is sure to provide the results you need for success. Find your edge by calling 574-223-6090, going to thewinningedgeathletics.com, and follow us on Facebook, X, Instagram, and LinkedIn. Hey, it's Dale Earnhardt Jr., and I'm here today on behalf of Nationwide and Jennings Insurance Agency to talk about something that's near and dear to my heart, off-road vehicles like ATVs and UTVs. Now, I know we all love to get out there and ride through the mud and the dirt, but the truth is we need to be more mindful of our own safety and the safety of others. In recent years, there's been a huge increase of off-road vehicle usage, which unfortunately means there's also been a rise in accidents. Whether you're a new user or a seasoned rider, we can turn this trend around by continuing to focus on safety. For starters, I recommend that you check out the safety resources and training courses available on Nationwide's website at nationwide.com slash ATV safety. Let's all do our part to make sure we're staying safe out there. And thanks for riding with me. Welcome back here talking sports with Val. We've talked a little bit about the soccer draw and everything for the Rochester teams. As the girls get ready for that Argus sectional Val, they, they're wrapping their season up. They had a, a, a loss to Northwestern, but they did yeah. beat Valley. Right, they lost to Northwestern 6 to nothing on Tuesday, but came back and beat Valley 4 to nothing last night. Went number two in the season for the Lady Seas. Which, uh, you know, hopefully will give them some momentum as they, yeah. uh, you know, they've got a very winnable game against an Oregon Davis team that has yet to put a ball in the back of the net. Yeah, yeah, so. certainly this is another great chance to get a win. And, boy, I, again, I'm just so impressed with the development of Micaiah Harding as a goalkeeper. She never, I don't think she'd ever played soccer before, much less goalkeeper. So Yeah, it's, soccer's hard enough, yeah. but to throw her in the goal at, right. right out of the gate, that's and, even harder. And for Audrey Wagner to, to basically, I mean, she's gone from being a really good defender to being a really good striker now. I mean, she's yeah. just had to change her game and is really good at it. And Skyla Mitchell, uh, playing with so much confidence in the back row, she's yeah. 
she's another senior who wants her career to keep going. And, you know, Adeline Samuel, she's a senior playing soccer for the first time. And yeah. she's another girl who I, the, the kids just love having her. Yeah, I think that, you know, just the more time they can spend on the pitch yeah. and get some experience for next year, and um, they're just going to need to find some numbers, too. Right, right. Because, again, girls like uh, Izzy Hook and um, Taylor Navarro, they're going to be a big part of this team's future. Right. Uh, we talked about the boys. They're going to be taking on Peru down at McConaughey on Monday. But uh, how did they wrap their season up? Right, a tough loss to a good John Glenn team, three to nothing on Monday at home, and then they came back to Blackator on Tuesday, and won seven to nothing. Uh, two goals each for Wyatt Davis and Spencer Backus uh, and Rabor Tindy. So yeah. that was really nice that all three of those guys got two. And who got the other goal? Jonas Kaiser. Yeah, first career goal. Good. And Jonas is a junior who had never played organized soccer before prior to this year, and he got his first goal. Yeah, and that was versus Culver there. Right, so. and three assists for Carlos Placencia. Yeah, yeah. As well as, I think, three assists for Davis. Yeah. So, again, why Davis, as much of a scorer as he is, he's a really good passer as well. So. Yeah, well, know. we could see him on Monday on mm -hmm. uh, on the turf there at McConaughey, So Yeah, I'm curious to see how the, you know, they played him on grass earlier. Will the turf change things? Yeah. Uh, will, will the game be played more in open space? Because that game... The, game, the field got really clogged when they played Peru earlier, so I'll be curious to see how this game is yeah. played. Yeah. Looks like weather's going to be pretty good for most of next week. Good, good. Dry, at least. Yeah, cameras like that. Yeah. <laughs> Cross-country team, how are they doing? They went to the New Haven Invite on Saturday. Uh, both teams had incomplete teams. Wanted to give a shout-out, though, to Allison Calloway, a personal best, 20.52. Okay. Was her time, I think her previous career high was 20.57. So she continues to get under 21 minutes. Uh, and the boys' side, uh, Reese Johnson was the front runner, I think, around 1915. Again, the New Haven invite was actually held at Huntington University. That is where the regional will be held at. That's why Rochester ran at that meet and not, say, the Culver Academy meet. Yeah. And uh, conference meet coming up, right? Conference meet coming up, 10 a.m. tomorrow at Manchester. We'll see what happens there. Again, you'd have to like the, the McConaughey girls have been pretty dominant. Uh, the past few years, and the Wabash boys yeah. have been pretty dominant. But we will see Northwestern. I will be curious to see what kind of impact they'll have on this conference meet, yeah. uh, especially on the girls' side. You, they always have some studs, oh. especially on the girls' side. Yeah, yeah. They still have um, – they had those two girls that were really good distance runners. Did they, did they graduate? Or did One they, of them graduated. One, One of them, them is at Butler, I believe. Yeah, awesome runners. Yeah. I know they were dominant in they the still uh, track one, season. Yeah, they still have one left. Yeah. So, again, the, the conference will be at Manchester, and then the sectional will be at Manchester coming up in two weeks on October 19th. So you definitely want to get the lay of the land at Manchester uh, tomorrow. Yeah. Again, we talked about the uh, tennis team as they went three uh, win 3-2 to two over Wabash. going to be taking on Peru tonight. What time does that one start? 5:15. 5:15 start down at Peru. Mm -hmm. So, and their tennis courts yeah. are at the new complex. Is it's that... uh, Thrush Courts, which is uh, third oh, it's downtown. Yeah, yeah, it's downtown yeah. on Third Street. Yeah. So yeah. it is not at the school. Go down to Third Street, and they, yeah, it's uh, it's a really really cool complex to yeah. watch and yeah. bring a, bring along bring a lawn chair just in case. Yeah. Would be my if you're a fan and you'd like to go see it. Yep. All right, let's take another quick break here, and uh, we'll come back and talk some more sports with Val in just a moment. 4C Health is a community mental health center that serves 14 counties in north central Indiana, including Fulton County. We offer an expansive list of behavioral health and crisis care services to best fit your needs. We strive to give you the best care that is compassionate, collaborative, and competent. Whatever you are going through, you're not alone, and we are here to help. Check out our website at 4chealthin.org to learn more or call us at 1-800-552-3106. Mike's Trash is your local provider for a variety of trash removal and dumpster services to Rochester and the surrounding areas. From residential to commercial and even for seasonal lake residents, Mike's Trash's reliable staff can help you find the right fit for your trash removal needs. To find a list of our services, visit us online at www.mikestrashllc.com in store at 824 Main Street, Rochester, or call 574-223-6429. We started looking at California, Nevada, Oregon, Colorado, and we simply could not find anything that was affordable that had a campus like this. We think of it as we're giving up our community, our home, 
and you're not. I always wanted to come here after retirement, and now I have my twin and his wife and my cousins around me, and it's just wonderful. There are some things in life you just can't plan for. But here at Evans Agency, we strive to help you have all your bases covered when it comes to protecting your assets from whatever life throws your way. Whether it's home, business, auto, or life, Evans Agency has got you covered. With a heart and hand for friendship, Evans Agency has been serving the community for 20 years. Call 574-224-6988 or visit online at www.evansagencyllc.com. Welcome back here talking sports with Val. Let's talk some Tipkinny Valley. The uh, football team went to Jimtown on Friday, Val, and something happened to them that hasn't happened for a few years. They got shut out. They got shut out. They lost 14 to nothing to drop to 4 and 2 overall, 1 and 2 in INSC play. So basically the conference championship is now out the door. It's going to be uh, between Knox and Jimtown. They're going to fight it out. Uh They play this they play tonight. And they play tonight. Yeah. yeah. Um you know, again, for I talked with Coach Stephen Moriarty earlier in the week, and he talked about two things: the the turnover bug, which just continues to bite them. Four more turnovers against oh, wow. Jimtown, and you just cannot have that mm-hmm. and win. Uh, you know, at their field, including three fumbles. Uh, so that that that's just a real problem. And then the, also, Valley needs to get their passing game going, and I, it's easier said than done. Mm-hmm. I mean, they had nine yards passing for the entire game, and again. Hmm. Again, you've got two. You've got a young backup quarterback playing. So again, you just love to say, "Well, just, well we just need to throw it more." But again, it's they've got to they're going to have to find a way to get the passing game going because again, uh, that's been that's just been a, an issue for them. Yeah. Um, you know, again, the defense played pretty well, given that the, they were giving up bad field position because of the turnovers all mm-hmm. night. Um, now, but now. There's one. There's now one further problem as they get ready for this Western team tonight, down in Rucheville, and that is that West Parker's injured, mm. and he is out for tonight. Um, Coach Moriarty declined to specify what the injury is, but still, it's it's a tough situation because you see, you want to get the passing game going. Well, West Parker can has got really good hands and can catch, but he's out for tonight. So, yeah. how are you going to get the passing game going yeah. just to have some balance? I mean, again, Grady Moriarty, he's, he's He's squeezing out every yard he can get. He had 20 carries for 67 yards against that Jimtown defense. That's not bad, but mm-hmm. again, it's just you need you need a little bit more dynamic offense, right? Because again, some variety. right? And Jimtown with their speed on defense, they they weren't worried about Valley running around the perimeter on them. Yeah. Well, a chance to get the ship righted a little bit against right. the Western team that's struggling. Oh, and six, and they haven't scored more than they're averaging four point five points a game. They just ha- have not been able to move the ball yeah. themselves. So this has a low scoring game written all over it. Yeah. But if you look at Western schedule, yeah, they're zero and six, but four of their six losses have been against teams with winning records. Mm-hmm. I mean, and the the two that the two that weren't uh, the two losing teams they've lost to Tri West, who's they're really, really good every year, mm-hmm. and Hamilton Heights, who had a, who lost like what one game all of last year. I mean, that's a really well coached team as well. Yeah. And I mean, they lost to West Lafayette last week, but it was only twenty to nothing. I mean, they were in the game the whole game. They're they're pretty stout defensively as well. Yeah. And again, they've got a first year coach. Yeah, yeah, and they're they're in a tough conference. And as a, you, oh, as you a were real, saying. Yeah, yeah, a real tough conference. I mean, yeah. they, I mean, their schedule is just brutal. I mean, they they play Logansport next. Western plays Logansport next week, and. Mm-hmm. That's a Logansport team that's having a great year. They're five and one. So yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, the volleyball team, um, you know, conference wise is doing really good. Uh, they had a little bit of a struggle there at Warsaw over the weekend. Yeah, they went one and three, but again, kind of a tough finish to the day when they lost to you know again they they get Warsaw right off the bat. That's a Warsaw's having a really nice year. Mm-hmm. They go one and three, but again that tough loss to Rochester. They lost to West Noble as well. Um, but able to finish in, uh, I think, 11th place on the day. But then they, they but that did, just didn't stop their conference momentum as they beat John Glenn, and then a nice win over LaVille last night, winning in three. Uh, really nice match for Emma Patrick, who had four aces. And then, uh, again, McKaylee Costello, she's just been just clobbering the ball all year. When, you, when you've got that, that kind of that synergy she has with Avery Wagner, yeah, uh, she's just you know again she's just going to get a lot of kills. Still, two conference games to go for the uh, Vikings, but they have it wrapped up, right? 
they already know in the conference. Yeah, I don't think they can be caught at this point. Yeah. Right. Uh, but uh, yeah, so wins over John again. John Glenn, I think he probably had the best chance to get him, but Valley was able to beat them. So Valley now has two wins over the year against John Glenn. They, they're in pretty good position. Yeah. Soccer, we talked about, right, but, uh, and of course Rochester comes to Valley on Monday night. Right. Uh, girls soccer, we talked about the uh, loss to Rochester. They also had a uh, match with uh, McConaughey there in the mix as yeah, well. Yeah, still looking for their first win in the year. They're zero and twelve on the season. And, of course, they go to Northwood, and again, that's going to be a tough matchup with Plymouth in the first game. Though Plymouth has won only three games themselves, but we'll see. Mm -hmm. uh, boys soccer? Um. Yeah, uh, they, you know, they've got a game coming up with South Bend, Washington on Saturday. Okay. Uh, before, that con before that sectional opener against a good Northwestern team. Yeah. Again, uh, that tight Kidwell, Valley's going to have to have some sort of defensive game plan. Kidwell is only a sophomore for Northwestern. He is a terrific player. And that uh, that will be on Tuesday, right, down here in McConaughey? Tuesday, yes. Yeah, yeah. The f yeah. So cross country will be participating in their first INSC conference meet. Yeah, not sure what to expect. Uh, yeah. We would know. Again, John Glenn, I think, has had a pretty good program over the years. Mm -hmm. uh, but we will. It's kind of we're we're figuring this out kind of as we go along here. Yeah, yeah. Boys tennis. Um, you know, that sectional is brutal. They had Warsaw in the first round, and right, obviously. Draw, yeah, <laughs> tough draw. You draw Warsaw right off the bat on their courts. They lose 4-1, to one, but wanted to give a shout-out to Noah Malott. He got the Valley Point at mm -hmm. three singles. Okay. But, again, I wanted to give a shout-out to Tristan Reagan. Great career for him, but he uh, suffered a tough loss in that match. All right. Uh, we got some time here. Let's go ahead and jump down to, uh, to our next segment and start in there a little bit. We can talk. Let's... Uh, Let's talk some Caston football. Sure. Um, Caston and Culver. Uh, boy, this was a, a game that literally went right down to the wire, and, yeah. and one play in the in the end kind of decided the whole thing. But let's uh, let's start at the beginning, Val, and uh, tell the story, I guess. Mm -hmm. Again, this is a Caston team that was looking for a two game winning streak. And able to make the stop on Anthony Summers on the kickoff. But again, Culver got off to a good start. That's a touchdown run, and they were up six to nothing. The extra points are going to come into play. Yeah, you know the fact that they they were not able to convert there is going to come back to haunt the Cavaliers. Mm -hmm. Nice run there by Jabez Yarber, but Culver led six to nothing at the end of one quarter. Ashton Boyer has had a really good year for Caston. He again started out the year injured, but he has really uh, been a prominent part of that offense since he's got back. And Caston will lead this game seven to six at halftime. Binion uh, basically untouched there. Yeah, big uh, touchdown run it puts the Cavaliers back up front. Yep, that made it twelve to seven. This would have, I mean, this was like the last play of the third quarter. And Caston able to take a 14 to 12 lead. Excuse me, it was 14 14. Is that right? And the touchdown pass from uh, Gavin Molenkoff to Logan Molenkoff, and Caston would kick the extra point. That was that was that was the big play of the game, as Caston went up twenty-one to fourteen. Seems like we've seen that play last week. Yeah, yeah, that bootleg to the right. They've they've gotten a lot of yards out of it. Back comes Culver, a touchdown run by uh, Jonas McEwen. And this gets is... it to twenty-one twenty. This is the play that is going to determine the uh, outcome of this one. And the uh, two-point conversion, no good. Caston yeah. gets the stop. And 
That would yeah, they were able to run out the clock, and Caston beats Culver 21 to 20. Caston beats Culver for the second straight year. That's the first time they've done that since they've, they've been conference rivals. Yeah. And Caston wins two games in a row. First time they've done that since 2014. Hmm. Well, three is going to be a little tough. Yeah, three is going to be tough. They host Triton tonight. It's yeah. homecoming at Caston. Yeah. We'll see how they do. Again, it's a Triton team that's coming off a 40 to nothing loss to North Judson. So I imagine they've been... They've had a tough week of practice, so I imagine Coach Whitaker's team will come in ready. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, one of those things too. You know, kind of like uh, when uh, Pioneer played Knox in Week Two after you know they got beat. Knox mm -hmm. got beat by Judson in Week One, and yeah. they were not happy, and yeah. they kind of took it out on the Panthers. And mm -hmm. you know, I'm sure Pioneer Triton is probably not going to be uh, too thrilled to have that loss on their record. You know. Judson is what Judson is, but, you know, Triton, I think, was, what, number six in the state as well? Yeah. I mean, so they yeah. were hoping to have maybe a little bit better showing against the Blue Jays than they did. So I think you're going to have an angry Trojan team coming yeah. down to uh, Fulton tonight. I, I agree. Uh, Caston has not won three games in a row since 2012. Yeah. And you remember that was a really good Caston team that won six in a row and I think made it to the sectional final. Yeah. Um, so uh, we will see how they do tonight again. You know, with Boyer, Boyer and Yarber both went over 100 yards rushing against Culver last week. We'll see if they can continue to get that that type of blocking because I think the offensive line play has been one of the key yeah. the keys for this recent winning streak. Well, and the one thing I was noticing watching that Culver game is they were bigger than Culver on the front line. Yeah, and they were they were kind of dominating that front line, and that's been a long time since you could say that about a Caston team that they, yeah. they were bigger than another team. Yeah, Noah Hurd is a really good offensive lineman for Caston. He's the one that really kind, of, really kind of sticks out when you watch the film. Yeah, yeah. So, well, good luck to the Comets tonight as they uh, host the Triton Trojans there at the uh, um, Comet Crater, I, I guess is what they call that. Right. Yeah. Right. So. And, again, the schedule doesn't get any easier because guess who Caston plays next week? Mm -hmm. North Judson. Yeah, so back to back against two top teams in, in yeah. the, not only in the conference but in the state. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, what about uh, Caston volleyball? Well, again, we talked about Wabash beating Rochester on Tuesday night. Before that, Wabash went to Caston on Monday and won in three. So a, a tough loss there, and then Caston played uh, North Judson and lost again there. So Caston now six and twenty on the year. Um, they host their own tournament tomorrow. Uh, and then they go to Triton on Tuesday, and they go to Lakeland Christian on Thursday. Okay. Obviously, Triton playing really well with that win over Pioneer. Lakeland Christian, that has the potential to be a very winnable match for the Lady Comets. Again, Maddie Douglas doing a little bit of everything, and uh, Natalie Warner really emerging this year, mm -hmm. uh, with, uh, along with Shaley Yaden on the front line. Yeah. You know, the, the boys' soccer team for the Comets, we talked about it. You know, they started off pretty rough, but uh, they've come on pretty strong as of late. They have. I mean, when they started the year 0-7, they're now 4-7-1. and They had a scoreless tie against LaVille uh, earlier in the week, and then a 4-3 to win over Winnemac mm -hmm. last night, a really exciting game. So, again, with, uh, again, Brock Hook and John uh, Aguilar-Mendez, uh, they've really got some offensive weapons on that team. Yeah. Tough draw for them, though, at Argus. is uh, They're going to have a tough first-round game there. Right. They lost to Lakeland Christian, I believe, 7-0 during the regular season, and now they'll get, they'll get them again in the sectional. Yeah, neutral neutral field. And I think that uh, you got to also look at they've been playing a lot better. So yeah. hopefully they can uh, flip the script a little bit there. Right. And I think, you know, again, defensively they've got to s stick tough in yeah. that one. Yeah. Uh, Cross-country, um, you know, I, I saw the, uh, the girls had a big result. Hannah Rogers is the freshman. Boy, is she a talented runner. I think she ran in the low 23s. So, again, she's looking like she's going to have a chance to make the all-conference team. She had a really nice run at the Culver Academy invite. Yeah. Uh, Boys-wise, again, more of a pack team with Kane Finke and uh, Reed Summers, really the, the keys to that team. Yeah. Uh, and then the conference uh, at Winnemac tomorrow? At Winnemac tomorrow, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So... Good stuff. Anything else casting wise you want to talk about? I think that's all I have. For, yeah, uh, for right now. But again, yeah, uh, football again. 
Can they get a three-game winning streak? It's the first. It would be the. Be, it's been a while. I didn't. I didn't realize it had been that yeah, long. Right, right. And it's gonna be a tough one. You know. Yeah. A really good team coming in, but uh, see what they can do. That'd be a. Uh, that'd be a good one if they can get that one against Triton. That'll really uh, open some eyes in the conference and across the uh, northern part of the state. Yeah. So. Well, we'll take a quick break here, come back, and we'll talk some more sports with Al here in just a moment. Spray foam is not only going to seal up the structure, but it's doing that insulation at the same time. So with a seamless application with the spray foam, you get all of that. You get your air barrier, you get your insulation, and obviously with, with one of the products, you get a vapor barrier as well. Hi, I'm Ashley Samsel with the Insulation Guys. And I'm Kyle Hoover. Let us be your solution to modern energy efficiency. Pace Setters Real Estate knows that buying and selling properties can be a tough and complicated task. That's why we are here to provide you with our full service process where we walk with you every step of the way. Whether you're buying or selling and your listing is commercial, residential, or investment, our agents are able to show any type of real estate that is active on the market. Visit us online at www.pacesettersre.net or call now at 574-223-5000. Steve Moore Agency is now offering an app to make viewing your policies, make payments, and file claims so much easier and convenient. You can download Steve Moore's Insurance Agent app from the Google Play Store or the App Store. Just search up Insurance Agent and look for the blue app with the large eye. If you want to know more about our services, you can call us at 574-223-3010 or visit us online at stevemoreagency.com. Harley-Davidson of Kokomo is your destination for everything Harley. We carry a complete line of motorcycles, including the new 2024 models. We also offer a full parts department and a service department specializing in customizing, high performance, and routine maintenance. And our motor clothes department carries the latest to genuine Harley-Davidson casual and riding apparel to keep you styling no matter where the road takes you. Call us today at 765-864-9999 or visit us online at hdkokomo.com. Welcome back here, talking sports with Val for a week seven Friday morning, actually, as we're filming, so Val can get down to the golf, but uh, you'll be watching this here closer to the evening, and Val, a pioneer up at uh, South Central, first time uh, they played South Central since 1991, I think, was that? I believe, yeah, something yeah. like that, yeah. Not a not a real common opponent in the past. It's going to be more common now, obviously, it being a new conference opponent for the uh, Panthers. But um, South Central struggling a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, Pioneer. Um, they have a few good athletes, but they're they, also kind of undersized in other areas. Especially yeah, in the line. I, I I noticed that they didn't really have a huge uh, bench, but yeah, they had a couple kids in there that looked like they were maybe around 120 pounds. Yeah, I mean, pretty small, but. Uh, not a not a terrible team, but when you told me that, that surprised me because I've always thought of Pioneer as having some good big guys, mm -hmm. but the, it's not that way at all. But and also they always have like two or three just really good athletes. Yeah, out there. yeah. Well, the the Panthers do. the The satellites were the ones that were having the the kind yeah. of the the smaller size kids mm -hmm. there, but you know Pioneer's numbers was the thing that really stood out to me the first time I was able to go mm -hmm. see a game. I mean. Not used to seeing just a few kids on the sideline. I, mm -hmm. I counted 28 kids that were dressed. Mm -hmm. So that's probably got to be the lowest numbers that we've seen for Pioneer since yeah. Adam Berry's been the coach. Mm -hmm. But uh, they were able to uh, to get it done in a big way. You know, well, Micah Rance yeah. had a huge, uh, I think, 81 or 82 yard punt return for a touchdown. Yeah. Basically. Plus, plus three touchdown runs. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and that's the second punt return of the year for a touchdown. Yeah, you know, Micah is—he's the real deal. Mm -hmm. uh, he's got some wheels, mm -hmm. and I don't think he was even touched on that punt return. Mm -hmm. So, pretty impressive win there for uh, for Pioneer. They basically win uh, win going away against the Satellites, and you know they've got a uh, home game coming up tonight uh, with uh, Culver. Mm -hmm. and yeah, one fifty-seven to six over South Central. By the way, yeah. Now, Noah Van Meter only had one carry. Mm -hmm. uh, was he just, were they taking it easy with him, or was he hurt? I don't believe he was hurt. Okay. So I think it well, was just good. going so well with uh, with well, Rands. With Rands, and Kevin Gluth had a really good game. Yeah, yeah. Came in, they they basically uh, put the JV in mm -hmm. the second half. So 
That was where Ruth right. got a lot of... Yeah, nobody from Pioneer had more than 62 yards rushing, but as a team they averaged over nine yards a carry for the game. Yeah, yeah. Now, it was over at halftime, and they basically just cruised through the uh, yeah. second half and, mm-hmm. and got the win. And You know, a Culver team coming in, uh, I believe uh, last time Culver went to the pit... They won 28-8, to eight, and that's yeah. the only time Culver's ever beaten Pioneer. Yeah. And it was on the road, believe it or not. Yeah. Uh, again, if you're Culver, I think you're, you, what you're thinking is, hey, they're overlooking us, because guess who Pioneer plays next week? Triton. And mm-hmm. guess who Pioneer plays the week after that? Judson. Yeah, yeah. So, again... They, they got it, the it, same schedule as Caston just a week later, yeah, Triton and Judson. Right. So if you're, if you're Culver, you know, hey, they're, hey guys, they're going to be overlooking us. You know, let's catch them... Let's catch them off guard. We know we can win. We can know we we can win here. Uh, as for Pioneer, can they stop again the the Binion Summers combo? Yeah. Again, Pioneer's run defense is going to be big. But again, Eli Guffey's been tremendous all year. He, didn't, he had another great game uh, the other night. Uh, JJ Solano playing really well on the defensive end as well, and Fletcher Smith on the line. Yeah. This little, is a little different looking Culver team than the one that came in here and, uh, to the pit and won two years ago. Though. Right. I mean, that was a really experienced. Right. Culver team that was right. loaded with seniors. Yeah, yeah. So that'll be uh, taking place at the uh, pit starting at 7 p.m. There, the uh, Cavaliers and the Panthers. Uh, what else here? Pioneer wise, cross country. Yeah, uh, Leighton Dodd just wanted to give him a shout out. I think he was third in the boys closed division mm-hmm. uh, at the Culver Academy invite the other day. So he is definitely going to be one of the favorites in that Hoosier North meet coming up tomorrow. I yeah. think it's going it, to, again, I'm don't not familiar with every runner in the Hoosier North, but I think it's going to be a two-man race between Leighton Dot and Logan Friedel of Winnemac. Yeah, yeah, those two have gone against each other quite a bit. Right. Yeah. Um, what about the uh, volleyball? I, oh, yeah, the Pioneer volleyball team. Uh, interesting week for Pioneer. You know, they, they uh, lost a tough... Uh, you know, a match to Triton on Tuesday night, losing in five sets, 15-9 in the fifth set. But I thought the key was the second set. I thought if Pioneer had pulled that out and gone up 2-0, mm-hmm. but, the, you know, Triton somehow won that set. I think it was 25-23. And then I think they just kind of wore down Pioneer. You know, watching the video of that from Triton TV, it just looked like Pioneer got tired. Around the, You know, again, Pioneer was up two sets to one, but then Triton won the fourth and fifth sets to pull out the match. And I... Pioneer just looked a little tired in that match. Uh, but, again, Layla DeMond, I mean, she's, you know, again, she's such a clutch hitter for a freshman. Yeah, and, and one of the things, you know, with this Pioneer team, they've done so well this year that you gotta you got to actually stop and think, you know, how young they actually are. I mean, mm-hmm. they're they're just a, a really young team. And, you know, besides Kirsten Nye, it's just not a, a, a whole lot of varsity experience. So, yeah, but they've just done so well this year. You just almost overlook that. A even little bit. Aspen, even Aspen Molinar as a junior doesn't have a ton of experience. Yeah, yeah, really lowest layer. About mm-hmm. the only one that does have you know that had varsity experience coming in. Mm-hmm. You know, obviously with the seniors they had last year, it was hard to hit the floor much. So, yeah, um, really young team, but they're they're doing so well. You just kind of forget about that and come back in a big way against a, a really good North Miami team. A great win over North Miami and North Miami's home floor. Yeah. Um, won that second set, I think twenty nine twenty seven, and and that and then the third set was like twenty five, uh, was like twenty five twelve or something. It was like once they got over that hump in the second set, that was yeah. kind of the key to get to pull them through, and they wound up winning in three. Yeah, I mean that was a North Miami team that swept Rochester at home, he, you know, in three sets. Swept Culver at home. Yeah, Culver too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So. Um, yeah, good win, and and that uh, I believe is that that's it for them for conference, right? Seven and one in the conference. Seven and one in the conference with one more conference match. There's one more conference match. No, no, excuse me. They're no, they're done at seven and one. Yeah, they're okay. nine in the conference. They play eight conference. Yeah, seven and yeah, one. Yeah, seven and one. So at worst, they're they're going to share that, right? Right, I believe so. Yeah. Yeah. Who does Triton have coming up? You, they they were six and one. So yeah. Are they? Has Triton played North Miami yet? I'd have to look that up. Yeah, so, um, yeah, good stuff there for uh, for the Panthers. And, you know, we talked a little bit about that, you know, that sectional. The the draw is going to be huge, obviously, with, uh, you know, Tri-County is just having a great year. So, yeah, ranked number two in the state. 
And I mean, but he can't overlook North White either, and he can't overlook South Newton, mm-hmm. who's and they're, they're going to be at home. I mean, South Newton's got a solid program. Yeah, yeah. So that uh, that draw, obviously, like we talked about, is coming up on mm-hmm. Sunday. So uh, the Panthers going to be keeping a close eye on on that, and you know, when will that matchup come mm-hmm. if they do face the Tri County? So. Yeah. All right. Anything else on Pioneer here? That's all I have. All right, let's talk a little Argus. You know, we talked uh, girls soccer. You can't talk uh, Argus soccer and not talk about Culver Academy. You know, that rivalry, obviously, they always face each other every year. And, uh, again, uh, you know, at Culver this year, and uh, the Academy got the uh, the best of the Dragons this time. Right, 4-1, to one, I think, was the final. Three or four? I think it was four. Four. Was it four? Yeah. yeah. Uh, Elena, uh, Elena Conklin, I believe, had the only goal for uh, Argos off of Samantha Umbaugh assist. Okay. So, again, you know, you look at the Lady Dragons record, it's not great, but I think they're, what, 5-8-1 five, eight, five, eight, and one or something like that. But, really, they played a, such a tough schedule. Yeah. Just not many just not many easy games on that schedule. And, again, mo- most of them against bigger schools. Uh, again, they've got a home game with Bethany Christian tomorrow. Uh, before that sectional opener against uh, LaVille, and they don't play in the sectional until Thursday. Yeah, yeah. Uh, again, Bethany Christian, another big rivalry over the years for uh, for Argus, and I think it's senior night, right? Right, yeah. yeah or senior day, I guess mm-hmm. it would be. Mm-hmm. So uh, honoring the, the three seniors, right? Ava yeah. Ava and uh, Morgan and uh, Olivia. Yeah. Yeah, so good group of kids there as well, and uh, you know, boys soccer wise, uh, again, the oldest rivalry in the state, right? Yeah. Argus Culver Academy that yeah. uh, was on air again this week. Yeah, the first order of business was they had to beat Oregon Davis, and they did eleven to nothing to wrap up a conference championship, and then they lost to Culver Academy four to two on uh, last night. Again, that game was tied two two at halftime. So yeah, yeah, the oldest rivalry in the state. Yeah, for soccer, but. I believe what did it say? Hundred and seventh time that they've played. That's that's just amazing to me. Yeah, hundred and seven times. Yeah. Well, I mean, their first year they they played. That was the the whole schedule was three three matches right. against it's, each other. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, that, that's basically the birth of Indiana high school soccer, right there. Yeah, yeah. So again, the sectional coming up, and again they got to buy. They get Culver. Uh, we'll see. Again, they they beat Culver eleven to nothing when they played earlier in the year. So, again, as long as they you know, just play their game. I mean, they should uh, make it through to the final, and uh, we'll see who they would potentially play. I guess Lakeland Christian would maybe be favored to come out of that half of the bracket. Right, right. They've got to they've got to go through the Comets first. So yeah, we'll see. But uh, they do have a win against them in the regular season. Yeah. So see how that goes. Yeah. Uh, by the way, I think we we talked about there, there is kind of an a little bit of an arrangement between the Hoosier North and the INSC, but Argus. The Hoosier North teams are not allowed into the INSC tournament, so I think we were wondering. So I, again, I don't know if that's going to con- that's going to continue. I think this is maybe just maybe a one year scheduling arrangement to help each other out uh-huh. to help them get some games in. I was wondering how that was working yeah. because originally the schedule that I saw for Argus did have them playing in that tournament. That's why I was like, are right? They, are and they then Todd Vanderweel said. Well, his again. This is his version of events. He said basically, we were a little too good. It's possible, but that's his, again that's his side of the story. I, yeah. I, we haven't heard. I haven't heard any other the other side of the story. But yeah, it's uh, so we'll see. We'll see what the schedule likes moving looks like moving forward. Do we know what uh, who is the chairman or whatever they call the, for that or the conference? Com- yeah, the com- yeah, I don't know, or who the commission the commissioner is. The yeah, commissioner, I don't know. Yeah, so, yeah, I think at one point it was the czar, right? For <laughs> yeah, they just made up new names, but. right? But they, again, a big home game with the defending state champs and Bethany Christian tomorrow uh, before the sectional starts. So again, that's a great way to get you ready for the postseason when the yeah state champs come to town. Yeah. Uh, how about the Argus volleyball team? Yeah, a loss to Winnemac on Tuesday night. Uh, you know, worked pretty competitive for the first two sets, but then lost 25-6 in the third set. So 3-21 and in the season. They travel to Bethany Christian tonight. They host West Central on Monday. They host Oregon Davis on Tuesday. And they're at Knox on Thursday. So there are some, there are some 
right. winnable matchups in there. Yeah, you look at Oregon Davis and Knox that you would think that you should be competitive. Oregon against. Davis has won twice all year, and Knox has won twice all year. Yeah, yeah. And then, you know, that's a that's a tough sectional that they're in, obviously, so the draw is going to be big for them yeah, as well. Yeah, yeah. Again, Culver, uh, again, cross-country-wise, we, ha- we haven't gotten many results, but Lexi Gibson uh, clearly going to be one of the uh, a chance to advance uh, once we uh, get going here. Uh, again, and, hey, they've got a conference meet. So that'll be, I think, a, I think a better, more competitive conference meet than the Hoosier Plains. Mm-hmm. So uh, we're we'll, curious to see how Lexi Gibson and Preston Millette do at the at at that Winnemac course. Yeah. Uh, and then they get a dual meet at home against Oregon Davis on Tuesday. I don't know how many runners Oregon Davis has. That could be a yeah. That could be a really small meet. Yeah. Culver wise, we we already talked about football. We talked about the game versus Caston. We talked about the upcoming game versus Pioneer. So yeah. Um, let's talk a little volleyball. Is the uh, the girls, you know, really heating up towards the end of the season? They're up to twenty one and five now. Yeah. And again, we we were kind of concerned about them about three weeks ago, and they you know they lose to North Miami in three there. Well, they've I don't think they've lost since. I mean, I think they've won eight or eight or eight, eight in a row since. Mm-hmm. They're just playing great volleyball because again, that was they lost to North Miami on a Monday, and then five days later on that Saturday, they won the Triton Invite. Yeah, and I got a chance to go to the to their senior night match against Lavelle, and I just talked to talked to Coach Andrea Barron and some of the players. And they said the Triton Invite was a turning point for our team. We really gained some confidence out of that, and they have just been played great volleyball since then. You know, they had a great win against Elkhart Christian the other night, fifteen twelve in the fifth. At Elkar Christian, and that was after losing the fourth set, like twenty five twenty seven. So for them to bounce back and then to win that in five, that was great yeah. for them. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, and then you know they they got back home after eleven o'clock on Tuesday night. Then had another home match with Laville on Wednesday. But boy, they were they were ready to go. I mean, they the adrenaline was flowing, and they were not tired as all. Went twenty five two. 25-10, 25-3, held LaVille to 15 points in three sets. Yeah. And it started off with Livy Overmeyer serving the first 17 points of the match. Yeah. It's crazy. And out of 75 points, I think they got 23 aces. Yeah. Livy Overmeyer <clears throat> was just on fire with her serve. Ashlyn Barrett had four assists. Uh, we talk about her older sister a lot, but, boy, yeah. Ashlyn's really Ashlyn. been coming on at that, yeah. libero, at that libero spot. Mm-hmm. And, and she's a really good server as well and a good digger. Gracie Milam has been really playing well in the back row as well. Yeah. And then, uh, well, what can you say about Brynn? 18 kills. Yeah. And seven aces. Well, we we knew... Uh, and that was after 31 kills and 20 digs against Elkhart Christian. Yeah. That is uh, just a monster performance. Well, we knew uh, Brynn was uh, already committed to go play at IU Kokomo, but Meredith Gordon also uh, going to be moving on and playing college at volleyball. At Lake, Lake Michigan College. Yeah. 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 So That's great. Great for her, and uh, you know, I was talking with Bryn, and I was talking with Andrea as well, and both said that just getting that college decision out of the way. And we've talked about this, and for athletes in different sports, mm-hmm. getting that college decision out of the way is just such a stress reliever. Yeah, just you get, you know, people are asking you all the time, and you're getting all kinds of mail and all kinds of mm-hmm. phone calls or or contacts and letters, and just finally getting that decision out of the way. I think you could tell Brynn was just ha- just having a lot of fun out there. Yeah, yeah. And again, her serve is flat out wicked. Yeah. Yeah, it's, uh, it takes a lot of uh, weight off your shoulders when you don't have to worry about uh, you know what you're going, going to do the next year. Yeah. You, you need to worry about what you're doing now and yeah. enjoy that senior year. And so definitely, um, boy, you, know, you talk about that sectional, um, Right, it's not going to be it's not going to be easy, but gosh, you got to put Culver right in that mix. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Three more matches next week to get them ready. They're at Knox on Monday, at Westville on Tuesday, and at Bremen on Thursday. So three more matches on the road before they get back for some home cooking. I mean, again, if they host the sectional, and if they win that, they host the regional as well. Yeah, be some good stuff there. Get a chance to uh, see the John R. Nelson Gymnasium floor, you know, a few more times. Yeah, hopefully. Yeah. So, uh, we talked about the uh, the soccer on the uh, a little bit on both sides there, I guess. But uh, you want to talk about how the uh, results have gone for the last week or so? Right, beat Taylor, I think five zero, tied Marquette Catholic one one, the other day with McCune scoring the only goal, 
And then an 8-0 win over North White last night with four more goals from McCune and two for Andrzejewski and one goal each for each of the Hamilton sisters. So 12 and I think 12-2-1 and one is their record on the year. Uh, so just having, a, again, with the losses to Argus and Laville and the tie to Marquette Catholic. Mm -hmm. So they've got that sectional to get ready for. And, again, I'm really curious to see how they do against Manchester, a team that's known for their defense. Yeah. How What will be Mark Manchester's defensive game plan on McCune and how will these teams scout each other because, again, both teams are pretty unfamiliar with each other. Yep. Looking forward to that one. That, yeah. that one should be a, a great game there on Tuesday. Mm -hmm. So uh, how about cross country? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, uh, again, the Culver Academy invite was the other day. Again, uh, Culver with just those two girls, Savannah uh, Harrington, has been their front runner on the year. Okay. So, again, they got a, uh, again, they've got the Hoosier North meet coming up. We'll see how they do. But, again, it's a pretty small team. Mm -hmm. uh, Winnemac, let's talk some Winnemac football. Yeah, again, uh, dealing with some injuries to the quarterback spot. So no Xavier Adriano last week. So Aiden Schooler, who had apparently had never played quarterback before, they had to give him a crash course in quarterback play. <laughs> and were hanging in there pretty well. And then North Miami just kind of broke it open in the second half and wound up beating Winnemac 41-14. to Yeah, Aiden Schooler, that's a name. Uh, his dad and I actually graduated together, played football together at Culver. So Okay, yeah, great. Yeah. So he was uh, he was running the show for him, huh? Okay. Yeah, awesome. Uh, tough one coming up though tonight as they head up to uh, Liberty Field take on the number one team in the state. Right, and uh, again, Winnemac has not beaten North Judson since that uh, was it the twenty twenty one sectional when they won fourteen eight at Liberty Field. Yeah, uh, but again, you know, uh, North Judson's has won the past couple years, but again, yep. last year it was a pretty close game. It was only twenty one eight. So again, we'll see if the, how 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 tough the Winnemag defense can hold in this game. Furious fourth quarter comeback, if I remember right, in that one, right when yeah. they won in twenty one, were they were they down going in the fourth quarter? Is that does that sound right? Yeah, it seems seems like, but yeah, that was uh, was that Cheyenne Allen's freshman year or sophomore year? Kind of uh, pretty pretty good sized upset, I think. Yeah, I never expected Judson to win that one, but yeah. I think I want to say junior year for some reason. Was it junior year? Yeah. Okay. Uh, how about uh, how about volleyball? We we saw them obviously last night here at Rochester and coming yeah. off of a win the night before. I'd seen some video of them. This was the first time I had seen them in person last night, and again you can see that you can see again the the, the growth that's taking place here, mm -hmm. and with Grace Roth and Ava Malco, they're trying to work two freshmen into the lineup. Right. Um, Brooke Roush really impressed me last night. I mean, she's pretty stout as a middle hitter, maybe maybe a little undersized, but really uh, a key to their offense. And again, she's she's got a lot of different shots out of the middle. Yeah, I, I think there's some really good potential for this team coming up next year. They're not losing too much as far as graduation goes, and uh, as young as they are this year, they got a really good junior class. And uh, and then also you throw in uh, Jocelyn Kane, who transferred from Pioneer. She's not eligible for varsity this year. Mm -hmm. I think Coach Kasten's probably got to be thinking that they've got a good shot to have a decent team next year. Yeah, I think this team is going to be a – right. They don't have a ton of height. They're going to be a smaller, quicker team. You know, Marissa Iverson is probably the closest thing that to, to, they have to really a, a lot of height, but I think – this is really a team that's going to rely more on its athleticism. Yeah. But it, it has a chance to be a really athletic team. Mm -hmm. And, again, I think it's just great that Maggie Smith, the older Maggie Smith, mm -hmm. big Maggie, has come back. I guess, again, Maggie was a phenomenal player, and I think she's going to be a great coach as well. Yeah, yeah. It's great to see the, right. uh, the alums come back. Right, and, and remember, Maggie has some Shriver blood in her. Uh-huh. So, I mean, she's... That means I think she's got some coaching DNA in her. So yeah, I she, I, yeah. And I think she's she's going to be a great help to Coach Caston's coaching staff. Yeah, yeah. Saw her doing a lot last night working with the team. Yeah. Yeah, so good stuff there. So they go to the Attica invite tomorrow, and then a home match with North Judson on Monday. That'll be senior night. And then they are at Logansport on Thursday. Yeah. And, you know, we were talking a lot last night about their sectional it's kind of wide open. It's wide open, yeah. I mean, Jimtown, you know, I guess Jimtown might have the best record, but I don't know if anybody has a winning record. Not, we mentioned Knox, they've only won two matches. LaVille is struggling, they've won five. Mm -hmm. uh, Bremen is well under 500 as well. 
Uh, South Bend Career Academy is a team that's str struggled. I mean, they lost to Argus the other day. So, yeah, uh, again, if somebody's going to somebody's gonna win a sectional title. Just who's, who gets hot at the right time. Yeah, yeah. Uh, soccer, we talked a little bit about their draw coming up. Um, what what they do last week? Yeah, a, a, a tough uh, loss to Westville the other night. I think lost two to one, and then lost to Caston four to three. So they've been really competitive. Now let's see how they do against North Miami coming up on Monday. Okay. But again, uh, again, a young team with a first year coach and Coach Badayo. Yeah. Cross country hosting the uh, conference meet tomorrow. Yeah, and again, you really have to like the boys' chances with Logan Friedel and Dylan Guilford and Nathan Pierce Chalski. I mean, that's a really solid one, two, three pack. Uh, Logan has really taken his step, his game uh, up another step. And the girls' side, boy, Cadence Hoover, Candace Croft, uh, Aubrey Wegner. I mean, that's another solid one, two, three on the girls' side. They're going to be right there uh, competing for a conference title. It wouldn't be surprised if they won both. Yeah. Good, uh, good team there. Not. I guess across the board for the conference, team-wise, you know, not a ton of full teams. Right. Uh, Does North Judson have a full team? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's, you know, a little bit of a struggle this year yeah, to get those teams put together. Right. Does Triton have a full Yeah, we're, we're kind of learning along with yeah. uh, uh, with everybody else here, especially as, you know, Argus obviously doesn't have a full team. Oregon Davis, do they have a full team? We, we're guessing they probably right. wouldn't. Right. So... Yeah, it should be interesting to see. You know, obviously that course, we, we usually see some pretty good times right. off that course. Yeah, usually a lot of really good times. M more pavement on that course than a traditional course. Yeah, looking looking forward to seeing what, uh, you know, Leighton Dot and uh, Logan Friedel. Logan yeah, Friedel, that's, that's that, going to be a, a real good battle. matchup. Yeah. yeah. So. All right, what else here before we wrap things up? Can you believe the football draw is coming up in nine days? Yeah, well. It's coming up on Sunday October 13th. Yeah, we are getting into that point. Obviously, soccer sectional starting next week and volleyball draws Sunday. So, yeah, it's hard to believe. I mean, it seems like just yesterday we were talking about, you know, here in a couple of weeks we're going to have our scrimmages coming up. And uh, here we are, week seven coming up tonight. So, And girls' basketball practice starts in less than three weeks. Yeah, yeah. Two weeks coming up next week, I believe. Yeah. Yeah, so... Yeah, <laughs> it's crazy. Time just seems to keep flying by for sure, and the more of the gray that I get in my beard, it seems like the, the faster time flies. So interesting stuff for sure. Um, seemed like there was something else I was going to talk about, but I can't remember for the life of me what it is. That's probably more of a sign of that uh, <laughs> yeah. old age coming along. But uh yeah, we got uh, Rochester at Northfield tonight. We've got uh, Tippecanoe Valley at Western tonight. We've got uh, Caston hosting uh, Triton tonight. Culver on the road at Pioneer and Winnemac on the road against the uh, North Judson Blue Jays. So uh, a lot of options for you tonight if you want to go watch some, some high school football. Should be some good ones uh, coming up again we will not have uh, video from Northfield, so apologize for that, but there's not enough room at the end, I guess, mm -hmm. kind of thing. So Randy and Val will have coverage of that on WROI, so you can tune in there or make the trip over to uh, uh, just north of Wabash. I don't think there's really a town. Urbana is kind of close, but is there a town that they consider home? Urbana, Spikerville? I don't know. Yeah, yeah. The cornfield. Yeah. <laughs> right out in the middle of it but, yeah uh, should be a good one there as the uh zebras look to remain unbeaten um who does mcconaughey have tonight lewis cass lewis cass so yeah keep looking you know we can look forward but you know mm -hmm. we keep looking at that week nine matchup down at mcconaughey yeah well, it should be interesting i mean lewis cass is i think number one in the state in defensive scoring average they've only allowed 15 points all year in six games yeah against the lewis cass team that could score yeah mcconaughey team that can score well, I was going to say Lewis Cass can score as well. Yeah, yeah. And Conqua, you know, that, yeah. that what, 42-4 to four against Northwestern, that was a little eye-opener. 42-2. to two. Yeah, 42-2. to two. Uh, that, was, that was a bit of an eye-opener, yeah. especially with, uh, I believe they were using their backup quarterback at McConaughey. Yeah. So. Yeah. That was, uh, that was a bit of an eye-opener. Yeah, there. yeah. So. Should be, uh, should be a good night of football. We'll be back. We'll talk some more sports with Val, of course, 
Again, tune in next week on the web on IHSA TV on RTC4 as we will be at uh, McConaughey on Monday for Rochester Zebras uh, boys soccer, and then be up at Argus on Tuesday for uh, a couple matchups up there as uh, the uh, Culver Cavaliers take on Manchester in Game One, and then the uh, Rochester Zebras take on Oregon Davis in Game Two, and then you know just check in after that because it's just going to all depend on who wins. So we'll have a lot of soccer coverage coming up mm-hmm. in the next week. All right, uh, Val, yeah, I know you got to go, so heading off. And uh, good luck to the Rochester Lady Zebras golf team as they are competing down in the uh, state tournament. Also, good luck to Mia McKay in, uh, competing as an individual in the golf tournament from Pioneer. Mm-hmm. All right. Thanks. See you, everybody.